Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, it's time for closing comments as we draw this uh, eighth international conference on head and neck cancer to a close. It's been a remarkable, truly remarkable three and, three and a half days. Uh, the scientific sessions have been extraordinary and uh, our attendees, all of you, have been remarkably engaged. Uh, our meeting rooms have been filled with people at the back and sitting on the floors until late uh, in the afternoon. So I think that's the sign of really an extraordinary meeting. Um, we've had, I think, really remarkable and notable keynote lectures uh, who have really enhanced our knowledge of where the field is moving into the future, uh, cost effectiveness, personal effectiveness, um, the future of healthcare quality and how we might collectively bridge the gap. Um, and then I would also say that uh, Toronto has been a fabulous city. Uh, I personally thought the Hockey Hall of Fame uh, event last night was uh, certainly one of the top uh, reception events I've ever been to at any meeting in my life. So. I hope you all had a chance to enjoy that fabulous venue and did some of the interactive slap shots or goaltending because it was really a remarkable event. Um, I want to take one more time to thank and honor our conference chair, uh, Jeff Myers, our program chair and local host, John Irish, our proffered papers chair, Bob Ferris, our posters chair, Evan Rosenthal, and our fundraising chair, Bert O'Malley, and all the uh, area chairs and area program leaders that have made this fabulous meeting possible. So thank you, because it's really the attendees that make the meeting, and uh, this meeting has certainly left an impact on me, and I hope it has left an impact on each and any, every one of you. So without further ado, I'll turn the podium over to uh, Jeff Myers, who will make a few summary comments about this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, I'm going to expound a little bit on uh, some of the things that uh, Carol just said and echo, echo a few of them. Um, in the end, I want to be remembered as having thrown a great party rather than run a great meeting because I had a great time last night, too. So thanks everyone who went. It, it was uh, as a lifelong ho hockey buff and as a kid who really just thought life was something you did between playing hockey, that was like a culmination of a dream. So thanks for being there with me. Well, here it is. It's the end of four and a half days of instructional courses, keynote addresses, plenary sessions, panel discussions, proffered papers and posters, as well as days and evenings of fun camaraderie and friendships coming to an end. We're really grateful to everyone who participated, whether as a planner of the meeting, a presenter, speaker, questioner, listener, or all of the above. Uh, I personally had the good fortune of attending many of the sessions of every type, and uh, really to a person, every speaker I saw was professional, scholarly, informative, and the presentations were, as our uh, president said, were really patient-centered, and they really had at their root whether they were quality outcomes, uh, clinical basic science, had the idea how can we do better for our patients and I think that's, you know, the message and why we're all here and it rang true uh, throughout each session. Um, every day I learned a lot of things and I'd like to thematically summarize some of them as lessons that I'm going to take home and hopefully, uh, you know, we all learned our own lessons but uh, I'm sure these will resonate with most of you. From yesterday's three truly outstanding speakers who've made major impacts on thousands of lives around the world through their scholarship as well as their direct patient care and training others, I learned different things about doing research. But the main thing is that research takes the time and commitment of dedicated teams and even after one major observation is made such as identifying HPV as a as a mediator uh, or playing a role in uh, neoplastic disease, there's a lot more to go on and follow up and, and bring more clarity. New hypotheses generated and tested that bring even greater understanding and then open up 
uh, more questions to be answered. And uh, that really came through in all those three disparate areas of research. We heard from the Nobel laureate, Dr. Harold uh, Zurhausen, who we're really proud to have here, that his work has impacted the world in major ways through the linkage of viral infection to cancer and ultimately leading to specific new programs for cancer prevention through lifestyle modification, vaccination, and cancer treatment and new approaches. From Greg Wolf, the consummate physician scientist in my eye and sort of a hero and role model for me as well as Carol and others, saved thousands of laryngies around the world through his organ preservation approaches. But we see how over the next three decades of his, uh, his professional life, he's focused on the same medically relevant topics and uh, using intense scientific focus and up-to-date approaches to evolve and gain clarity uh, as new fields like cancer stem cells and genomics come in, they enrich his work and, and carry it forward. And we know that each adds new understanding, new questions, and gets us closer to our goal of taking better care of patients. From Brent James, we saw that by applying these same rigorous scientific principles to the abundant clinical data that we generate every day and harnessing it with new bioinformatic tools, we can give better, more cost-effective care to our patients. This includes standardizing what care we can, but not to be robots. This enables us to individualize aspects of care where we need to. From Dr. Thompson, we heard a, a similar message that while sentinel node biopsy has become a standard in the management of intermediate thickness melanoma and some other cases, it actually personalizes uh, the care that we give. And we kind of give each person their own individual operation that they need instead of some uh, previously described or named lymphadenectomy. From Dr. Freischlag's opening address, this taught me a lot about emerging demographic trends, wherein soon 50% of our head and neck surgery workforce will be female, and that this brings into focus the need for us as individuals, practitioners, and leaders to discuss and confront the resulting realities of caring for our caregivers, our families, ourselves, and our patients. And we need to review the scientific data in this area, reflect on that, and generate some hypotheses about how to balance work, life, family, individually for ourselves and across our units so that people can get covered and, and do the things they need to do without being made feel weak or that they're hurting the team. Because ultimately, that's unsustainable to do it the way we've been doing it. And with these workforce changes, this will enable us to be better caregivers. And ultimately, that's what's going to be best for our patients. It's not just a selfish thing. Finally, I learned from our outgoing president, Dr. Bradford, about the importance of the team, exemplified by the team that's been long established that she carries on her department that was passed on through uh, Charles Krause, who was here at the meeting as her distinguished guest from her Hayes, to her Hayes Martin lecture, Greg Wolf, and now on to her as the uh, H&S outgoing president. Lasting image for me from this meeting was Bo Schembechler's riveting locker room speech where he said the word team, team, team over and over again. Clearly, from all the talks that we've heard, <coughs> great clinical care, outstanding research, and wonderful educational programs like this meeting take the hard work of well-organized, aligned, led, and resourced teams. The challenge moving forward for leaders in academia is how to change our system that rewards academic excellence for individual performance rather than on the basis of what uh, the individual contributes to the team. And I think we'll figure out a way to do it, and it'll be better for our uh, academic endeavors and for our patients. So once again, I'd like to recognize our team that uh, put together this meeting and uh, start with John Irish, our program chair, local insider, who uh, really helped to, to make this uh, such a wonderful experience for all of us. Bob Ferris, Crawford, I'm sorry, uh, Crawford paper chair, and Eben Rosenthal, poster chair, and just those titles sort of underestimate their contributions to the, to the program and all aspects of the meeting. They were wonderful collaborators and did a great job. Bert O'Malley was our fundraising chair, and we got uh, really close to all our goals through his efforts and the efforts of Shelley Ginsburg of BSC. So from BSC, they have a wonderful team, very uh, professional uh, planners involved in all aspects of the Head and Neck Society, and uh, we're really here to you know, fill in a lot of the details so we could focus on the program and making it and the content. 
So it includes, uh, in addition to Jennifer Clark, our master meeting planner, who really just went over and above and did a fabulous job. And the thing that, uh, in, sorry, a, a um, evidence of that is the app, which I just thought made this meeting and getting to everywhere you needed to go so easy. And that sort of, she streamlined and pulled everything together into something like an app to make this meeting possible. Her team, Aaron Goodman, Tammy Kim, Shelly Ginsburg, Christina Kassendorf, Aaron Sch Schwartz on the CME side, um, sorry, Ed Rosato, and um, a couple more, I don't want to forget. Uh, Janae Root and uh, others who helped with the, the local teams that helped with the registration and AV. Finally, the uh, assembled team of subspecialty experts who I won't uh, name by name individually, they, they really helped our, uh, our program to develop in a multidisciplinary way and to represent all aspects of our specialty with topics as well as uh, presenters and we're grateful to them. Uh, the presidents of the AHS during this time, including Drs. Ridge, Koch, Isley, uh, Bradford, and Mark Wax, who starts on the job today. They've done a wonderful job and really been supportive. Mark Wax was our treasurer through a lot of it and kept us on uh, a, a good budget, and, and we were able to do fun things like last night because of uh, his close watch, and more recently, Ehab Hanna, who now serves in that role. Last but not least, Dennis Kraus, who brings uh, continuity of the, uh, the society through the years of different presidents, carrying a tireless work ethic and a pretty good sense of humor to us. So we uh, are grateful to you, Dennis, for all that you do. And, uh, let, uh, and finally, the industry sponsors the registrants and exhibitors for supporting this great meeting. So we have, uh, as this ends, you know, we think everyone's probably tired and ready to go home and try some of these things out at home. And uh, we look forward to other great events. The HNS meeting will be in Orlando in 2013. There's this planned extravaganza in New York in 2014 that combines the HNS annual meeting, the every four year meeting of the International Federation of Head and Neck Oncology Societies, or IFNOS, and a very special 100th anniversary of the Head and Neck Service at Memorial Sloan Kettering. So I'm going to end my remarks here and invite Jonathan Irish to come up and give us an overview of uh, this last day of the meeting. Thank you all.